Well, hey everybody, and welcome to the first ever recap group. We are so thankful that you are here. Uh, even as I sit down to record this, uh, I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude. Uh, I'm thankful for our leaders in the room who have opened their homes and have, have hosted everybody and are willing to kind of say, I'm going to go forward and, and lead this. I'm thankful for them. Uh, I'm thankful for all of you who are attending, who are taking time out of your busy schedule to be here and to get together and to step out of your comfort zone and come to somebody else's house and say, I want to grow uh, in my faith. I want to grow in connection with other people. Uh, I'm just so grateful and thankful uh, for each and every one of you that are listening back to this video. I just kind of want to just welcome uh, everybody into this new thing that we're doing. Uh, this is new. This is new to me. This is new to our staff. This is new to everybody. And so I'm just kind of excited to be on this journey with you. But here's what this is kind of going to look like. Uh, week to week, we're going to get together like this. We're going to just have this connection point. Uh, we're going to get to know each other more. We're going to do some fun things together. But then we're just going to kind of sit down and go through this recap portion of it. And uh, even the recap portion is going to look different from week to week. Some weeks I might be on my deck because I got a sick kiddo inside. Uh, other weeks it's going to be in my office or at church. But uh, two things are going to be consistent from week to week, and they are this. First of all, it's going to be real and it's going to be conversational. Uh, I'm going to do one take. I might slur my words. I might make mistakes, but I want this to be real and authentic uh, in such a way that it feels like we're just sitting down and having a conversation. Uh, but the second thing that's going to be consistent is the heart behind this. Uh, I want this to be something where uh, we're growing together. Uh, we are, we are, you know, getting to know those in the room with you uh, that you might have never met before. But uh, wherever you're at in your faith, our prayer with these recap groups is that uh, you'd grow in your faith. Uh, grow in knowledge, yes, but even just grow in application as iron sharpens iron as we share things together because here's the cool thing the bible says where two or more are gathered there i am with you and that's jesus speaking and i've always wondered what that looks like because jesus is omnipresent he's everywhere all the time so does that mean when we get together he's in the room well no because he's in the room with us even if we're by ourselves. but here's what jesus is talking about is when we get together as a group, as we're doing right now, there's a power in coming together and sharing burdens and sharing successes, sharing questions and doubts and sharing revelations and life lessons. There's a power in coming together and sharing life together. And that's why I'm so excited for these groups. And so I'm just thankful you're a part of it. I'm thankful to jump right in. But here's where I want to start today. This is called a recap because it's going to be a recap of what we talked about on Sunday. But we're going to go in a little bit deeper, hopefully, through discussion and questions. And so uh, in Psalm chapter 29, it's a psalm of worship. David is worshiping uh, after he just saw a powerful thunderstorm come through and as he sees this powerful thunderstorm comes through he just has this awareness if you will of how big and powerful God is and is causing him to worship so uh, as we kick off this recap group I have a question for you and leaders I'm gonna have you pause in just a second I'll give you a prompt to do that but let me read the question I have for us to discuss as a group and it's quite simply this how do you personally relate to God and if I could just kind of rephrase it in a, in a way that I understand it, what is it or, or what situation is it when you're just aware and you can kind of personally connect with God? And so I just kind of give you an example for me. Uh, you know, sometimes that's sitting down and reading my Bible and praying, but there are other moments like I had a couple nights ago when I was just sitting out on my deck here and I was, I was just processing through life and I was just, was kind of just battling through some stresses and worries. And I kind of, it was night, it was like 10 o'clock, everybody was quiet. And I just looked up into the sky and I saw all of the stars in the sky. You know, the beautiful kind of stars that are so big and expansive. And there was just that moment where I realized about how far away those stars were, how big those stars were. And I just realized in that moment, God created all of it. And he did all of it. He's that powerful. And so that's just an example for me. So the question I have for you is how do you personally relate to God? I'm going to have our leaders pause that video right here now. Why I love that question and why I think that question is so important 
is because personally relating to God is how we really grow in our faith. And I always kind of equate it to this. I'm a huge sports fan. I love sports. I love hockey, baseball, football. I love everything. If, it, if it's a sport, I'm in. But in the fall, I really love football. Like, I really love football. And I get way into it. I know the players from all the teams. Not all the players, but I know a lot of players from a lot of different teams. I know where, where they went to college. I know what number they are. I know their general stats and where they stand relative to other people in their position. I know a ton ton about the football players that we watch on Sunday on our TVs. But I know a lot about them, but I don't know them. They don't know me. We have no personal connection, which is why it's so important for you to personally know God because when you personally can connect to God, you can trust him and you can ascribe to him all the power through his name as as David gives us in Psalm chapter 29. And so as we talked about on Sunday, David kind of opens the psalm saying, ascribe, ascribe, ascribe. Remember how powerful God is. But then he's very intentional about kind of nitpicking the other sources of power that the Israelites would have had. So in verse 3, he talks about how the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Because there was a false god named Yam who was the god of the waters. And if you wanted to have safe passage over the Mediterranean, you had to go and pray to him. But David's saying God's even more powerful than Yam. In verse 5, he talks about how the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. The cedars of Lebanon were the image of power and strength in this day and age. They were 130 foot tall trees, 30 feet in diameter. <clears throat> they were a symbol of strength. If you want to talk about how strong and powerful an empire was or how strong and powerful this person was, he would say he's as strong as the cedars of Lebanon. And so basically he's saying self-sufficient strength. And, and, and David's saying, no, God's even bigger than the cedars of Lebanon. In verse 8, he talks about the voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. And this was this, the, the desert of Kadesh was a symbol of the 40 years of where the Israelites would wander through the desert before they entered into the promised land. And so God is saying, you know, God, or David's, I'm sorry, David's saying God's even more powerful than this, this perceived symbol of just never ending tyranny. You know, the Israelites for 40 years, they thought this would never end but David's saying God's even stronger than even an impossible situation that feels like it's never, ever ending. And so David is kind of taking each of these symbols or these sources of power that are not like God. And he's saying, here's how God is bigger than them. And so uh, a question I have for you really quick here. The second question I have for you rather is uh, what are the sources of power that keep you from relating to God? What are those things that are keeping you from knowing God and feeling close to him? I want you guys to discuss that and pause that right here. All right, if you heard uh, a little bit of the tapping there, that was uh, my sick kiddo on my sliding glass door telling he wanted me to or trying to get my attention to tell me that he loved me. <laughs> so, uh, kind of heart melting moment on this end, but as I told you, it was gonna be real, one take. Uh, and so here's where I kind of want to end here, and here's where I think the rubber meets the road and why I just love recap. Um, what I love is how David ends this psalm. Verse 11, Psalm chapter 29, the Lord gives strength to his people and the Lord blesses his people with peace. It's important for us to relate to God personally so that we can have that personal connection with him and trust him with our life. It's important to acknowledge the things that keep us from connecting with God, the things that keep us from trusting in God and knowing he's good and stepping out in faith. It's important to kind of discuss those things that keep us holding back. But the thing I wanted to discuss last is this last verse is the Lord gives strength to his people and the Lord blesses his people with peace. It's one thing to know God's powerful. It's one thing to kind of just feel that power. But the question and the thing I want us to discuss last is what are we doing with that power? If we know God can move mountains and he can do the impossible, what are we doing with that information? 
Are we stepping out in faith and doing things that make us feel uncomfortable, but we're doing it because we know God's behind us? Are we believing and continuing to pray and continuing to pursue the things that God's calling us to do, even though the diagnosis feels impossible, even though the finances feel like they're never going to ever get resolved? What are we doing with the power that God gives us? Because I've talked about on Sunday, lightning, the literal physical lightning has 300 million volts, a ton of power, but we can't harness it because it's too fast. It's too instantaneous. It's too, it burns too hot and too fast. The power of God is not like that. It's infinite, too big for us to wrap our minds around. But God gives us that power in a way we can like feel it, right? He gives strength to his people. And he also gives us peace. The last question I have for you is this. What is it this week that you want to do with the power that God gives you? Maybe it's somebody you want to reach. Maybe it's somebody you want to serve. Maybe it's the power you just want to speak into a situation. What is it for you personally that you want to do this week with the power that God gives you? Discuss it and pause it right here and uh, discuss among yourselves. I'm so excited for this group because I think as we walk out of these groups, I hope you feel encouraged. I hope you feel seen and I hope you feel uh, God in, in, in a whole new way as we do this group. So I'm excited for these groups. Each week might look different. The questions might be uh, three, four, five fold. They might be one fold, uh, but I'm just excited to see where God leads all of us through this recap group. So I pray that as you walk out of this place, as you walk out of the home, you feel God's strength and you also feel his peace. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for the ability to get together as a group. And I just ask God that you would please be with us this week. I pray that we would step out in faith. We would step out in courage. We would step out in boldness as we know your power goes with us and your power goes before us uh, in even the most impossible circumstances. So God, we love you and we thank you. God, we ask that you'd be with us this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love all of y'all. Have a great week, and we'll see you on Sunday.